I think that people tend to get too hung up on, okay, there's a weird instrument in such and such band, or such and such band has a woman in it, so like that's a thing. You know, it's, it, it, you know, those things do matter, but it's not, uh, it's not the focus of what those people are thinking about when they're writing the music. You know, they're just thinking about the notes and the rhythms and the parts and making it flow and making it be beautiful or ugly or whatever their goal is. But uh, I think if if the audience could, you know, see the music more, maybe how the people that wrote it see it where it's a little bit more abstract uh, and a little bit less about presentation and you know what gear they're using um, that everybody benefits because then you're really looking at like what's what's the real thing that's being said the real thing that's being expressed which is the music itself so I do get a little annoyed sometimes when people fixate on that too much but I can't blame them because it is such a weird thing if I saw a band play with an instrument that I found interesting and was you know uncommon I would probably go up and want to talk to them about it too so I see both sides of it Every time you make a new record, um, you you know subconsciously or consciously think about the things that were successful in the last one and the things that weren't. Um, Production-wise, I was really unhappy with the previous album because me and the drummer were really butting heads about how we wanted it to sound, and you know he wanted to go for something sort of very sort of uh, perfected and and edited and you know something that was like very cleaned up, and I wanted to go for more of a just like a performance, you know, like a like a rock band doing as little fixes as, as, as necessary. So we got to do that more with this new album. And I think as a result, it has a lot more energy and uh, it's a lot more aggressive. And like, I, you know, having, especially when, you, when you're dealing with music where it's, it's not written on instruments, our music's all written on paper, the human element is, becomes very important so that it doesn't just sound like you're listening to like a MIDI file on the computer. So uh, I think actually having it be closer to real performances, longer takes, less editing, less punching in, less like fixing of drums and stuff like that. Um, I think the music actually benefits from that. Even if it's a little sloppier, you know, who cares? <laughs> I think it turned out really good. My like at the time we were making it, I was a little bit bummed because I'd written two more songs which we didn't have time to learn. So it ended up being like a uh, basically a five song album with like an inter interlude. But in retrospect, I think that's actually good because uh, with 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 like music that's of, of this sort of density, I think it's nice to have a short album. Like it, it's a little more digestible for people, and it's like you know whether or not you like it or hate it, it's just like you can actually get through it in one sitting, and it's it, it's not it just doesn't tire your ears and your brain out to the point where like even if you liked it the last song, you're just like ah, I don't even care anymore. You know? So I, I think actually having like the, the brevity is, is is an advantage to this band. I even thought like back when we were first doing recordings that we'd maybe only do like two two three song EPs, like almost like a grindcore band would or, or something just because uh, I thought the idea of sitting through like a full-length album with this type of music like wouldn't really make sense. So we have made full lengths, but at least they've been on the shorter side. And I think that's probably actually a good idea. <laughs> I mean, speaking for my the songs that I wrote for the last album and for this album, because I can't speak as much about uh, ones that other people wrote, um, I, uh, I feel like maybe there's a little more... Um, a little less fear of repeating. I mean, it's still very non-repetitive music, but I think it's a, it's a, it's. A, when I was younger, I might have had more of an impulse to um, worry that I was uh, being too long-winded or something, and you know, like condense ideas and you know, make make every event kind of like the most important thing. But I, I think with a with a slightly more stretched out way of uh, approaching the music, it flows a little bit better. And even if it's complex and dense, it. Um, it still achieves that, but like maybe in a way that's uh, just slightly less precious about every single moment. I, I use a computer to compose um, because I'm actually not I'm not a sight reader at all, so I'm not somebody who can like write down music and then play it right away. So the interface of having a computer is really important for me because I can actually listen back to my ideas right away. Um, so it's almost like if you had your guitar and you were recording ideas one by one, but I'm not playing a guitar, it's just mind to paper. Uh, so that's, you know, that's the main way in which composing for this band is different from any of the other ones. Like in Disruinly, I would sit down with the bass and I'd write some stuff on bass and that's it. Like, like how probably most bands would do it. But I think that the, the separation of yourself from your instrument allows you to do things that you wouldn't think to do otherwise. Because when you, when you have a guitar and you're used to playing it, you, you have certain patterns you fall into. And um, 
it's pretty interesting to, to not do that. And, and I think one funny byproduct is that a lot of the hardest parts of our songs don't sound particularly impressive. <laughs> they, they, they almost sound like we're messing up or something because, you know, that was what I wanted to hear and go for. But like when you when you take music written away from the instrument and translate it to the instrument, it doesn't always like sit well on the fretboard. I mean, it might, it might not sound faster or whatever, but it might actually be just difficult to get your hand in the right place at the right time. I think maybe the decision to be instrumental was before we'd really written much music. So I'd say if anything, it was more the other way around. Like it wasn't like, let's write some complex music and because of that, let's make an instrumental. I think it, I think it was maybe more that you know, I, I don't even, honestly, I don't even think we talked about it that much because Mike, the guitarist, and I started playing together before for a couple years before we had even our old drummer, and we, we did some recordings just with drum machine and stuff like that. And I don't even think we ever talked about whether or not we were going to be instrumental. It was just our, our priority was always, we need, a, we need a drummer. That's like the basic thing we need, and then like we'll figure it out. So I remember we even, like, uh, one drummer that we jammed with, there was another guitar player who he played with and so we were even thinking like oh maybe we'll have another guitar play it was really open-ended in terms of the instrumentation we knew we wanted drums and then we would figure it out from there and i think once we found that at that point we kind of had a sense of what the music was like and it didn't seem to necessitate vocals so we just went from there <laughs> I think like making a, a sort of distinct decision to not make any one of my bands or even the, the um, total of them be a career. Like I've always sort of made a separation between what I do for a job and what I do for music and I've always tried to separate those two things. When you go on tour it's important to try to make your expenses back because I lose money every time I go out. Um, but. I, I, you know, I've decided like, okay, studio work, that's, that's my job, that's what I do for work. And then this other stuff, I don't have to like ever have those, uh, you know, I, I would never have to compromise what I'm doing creatively because of that. If I always just do exactly what I want to do and never do anything because, oh, you should do this tour because it would be good for the band's exposure, I don't care. If, I, if it's with a band I like, if it's a time I feel like going on tour, I'll do it. If not, I don't. I don't have to. It's not, you know, it's like there's no pressure. You know, I shouldn't feel that pressure. I think nobody should really feel that pressure. And, you know, it's almost pointless, I think, to, to try to go into a career as, as a band because it's so, it's, it's just so impossible to actually make enough money to, to make a decent living. You have to be a huge band to do that. It's like 0.1% of all the bands out there. And it doesn't really have anything to do with whether or not you're good or not. It's, it's sort of random. I mean, yeah, you have to be, if you want to be in the professional world, you have to kind of do, you have to play the professional game, sure. But plenty of bands do that, and only a couple of them get, get somehow picked by the Illuminati to uh, you know become popular successful bands that can actually support themselves off of it um, so for me that's an important distinction to make and uh, it just you know there's so many bands that uh, it makes me sad you know like when sometimes we used to tour with the younger younger bands and they would be like you know hey if I ever had to go back to playing basement shows I just quit music I'm like, what? what excuse me like if you're really like all you're all you're doing this for is to like do the next bigger tour and you know get paid more or have like a bigger backstage room or something like that's why you're doing this like you're not doing it because you actually like the riffs you're playing on guitar like that's that's pretty backwards anyway